Hi everyone. Welcome to Jabba Techie. So today I am kicking off an exciting new series on gRPC which is one of the most powerful tools for modern system communication. This is part 1 video of gRPC where I will give you a clear picture of what is gRPC, why it's such a game changer, how it actually works under the hood and we'll also compare it with REST, the traditional way of building APIs. So you can see why gRPC is becoming the go to choice for high performance system okay so be with me till last by the end of this video you will have a solid foundation to get started with gRPC as usual let's make the concept super simple okay all right so without any further delay let's get started So let's understand what is gRPC. gRPC stands for Google Remote Procedure Call, which is a super fast communication system created by Google itself. It helps different application talk to each other efficiently even if they use different programming languages. It is designed for speed, low data usage and real time communication which makes it perfect to use for microservices, cloud apps and different backend services if you are unclear about this definition then don't worry you will get concrete picture about grpc in a moment so before we learning any concept first let's understand the problem we had without grpc then it will be easy for us to connect the dots right now imagine you are building an e-commerce application using traditional monolithic approach in this model all the business logic whether it is for order payment tracking all bundled together into a single var or ear file and deployed on a server one advantage of this approach is that since all logic resides in the same module we can avoid multiple network calls however monolithic architectures comes with several drawback like tight coupling every component is interdependent making changes difficult failure impact a failure in one module can bring down the entire application deployment bottleneck even if you do a small changes it requires deploying the whole application together okay so to overcome these challenges and achieve better scalability modularity and maintainability developers have shifted from monolithic to microservices architecture where each business function is built as an independent service all the order related function will keep inside this order microservice all the payment will keep inside the microservices similarly for courier and for tracking okay this is the simple microservices architecture now these microservices communicate with each other using http rest call that's the best practice we do follow right even though this architecture offers several benefits one significant drawback is it increase the network latency for instance if you have 20 microservices the communication between them along with the serialization and deserialization of the data can lead to higher network latency which directly impact to your application performance now the question is how can we optimize this communication and enhance our application's performance well that's where grpc comes to rescue us let's explore at high level why grpc is better than rest and how it works internally this will give you a clear understanding of when and why you should choose grpc over rest to keep it simple i'll take two microservices order microservice and payment microservice next we'll compare rest with grpc across different aspect okay so if you observe the left side 
will discuss all the challenges we faced using rest and on the other side we'll explore how grpc address those challenges so let's begin with first problem that is network latency as you understand rest api often struggle with network latency which makes your application slower especially in microservice or real time system because rest typically use http1 where each request open a new connection and wait for a response before sending the next one this adds overhead and making your application slow next let's move to the next problem in rest approach that is data processing overhead usually in rest api client and server communicate with text based json which is human readable but heavy or you can say it's bulky in nature now what happen in rest every request and response must go through serialization where it use jackson library to convert object to json and again in receiver side it does deserialization to convert json back to object in high throughput application this process consumes more cpu and memory making it slower especially when handling large of frequent data exchange you can say this is one of the major performance bottleneck in rest api now move to the next problem that is request response model there is no live stream support in rest api as you know rest follows a request and response model it means the client send a request and has to wait for the server's response before sending another one so there is no continuous data flow to real time updates because the server cannot push updates automatically until unless you ask him by another request saying that hey i am sending the request give me the update now with this approach you cannot perform live stream for example imagine you are checking live cricket score in an app which is built with rest api now you send a request and get the current score but when the next ball is bowled you never know whether it is a run or it is a wide or it is a clear bowled you don't know unless you send another request this means there are no automatic updates you have to keep refreshing the application now being a user will you prefer to use an app that does not provide real time updates of course not that's another challenge with rest api i hope you clearly understand the challenges with traditional rest api if yes let's take it a step further and explore how grpc solve this problem and how it work at high level okay let's begin with the first problem we had in rest that is high network latency grpc use http2 for multiplexing unlike rest which opens a new connection for every request grpc uses single connection that handles multiple parallel request at the same time as a result you no need to wait you will get faster response since there is no repeated opening and closing of the connection mechanism okay that is what the reason of reducing the network latency in grpc next data processing overhead as you understand rest use json data which is text based and takes more time to process over the network and doing serialization and deserialization however grpc use a different media type for communication called protocol buffer or you can call it as a protobuf protobuf is in binary format with compressed data that's why serialize and deserialize process is much faster as compared to json so don't worry we'll discuss more about protobuf in our upcoming tutorial with more detailed explanation for now i am just highlighting how grpc is better than rest in certain aspects okay now let's move to the next major drawback in rest that is rest does not supports streaming for continuous data flow or you can say 
no live streaming in rest api as we discussed earlier rest works on a request response model this means the client sends a request and wait for the server's response which is a kind of unary operation or you can say synchronous call isn't it however in other hand grpc supports four different type of communication pattern like unary this is similar to the rest request and response model where the client send one request and gets one response server streaming here the client send a single request and the server keeps sending multiple response over the time think of live cricket score updates client streaming in this case the client send multiple request and the server respond only once after all the request are completed last one which makes grpc more powerful that is bidirectional streaming here both the client and server can communicate continuously at the same time a good example you can consider real time chat application or whatsapp call this makes grpc much more powerful than rest in handling real time or continuous data flow okay out of the box isn't it now let me show you some real world example of different type of grpc communication patterns to help you understand them better so we have understand four different type of grpc communication pattern unary server streaming client streaming and bidirectional streaming now let's understand those different type of patterns in details so let's discuss about the first one that is unary unary means one request one response what happened the client send one request and the server send one response back just like a normal rest api call next let's discuss about the server streaming one request multiple response the client send one request but the server keep sending multiple responses no need for client to keep asking for update let's say you order some pizza okay and the restaurant start sending the updates to you you send one request to the restaurant hey what is the status of my order then he will keep sending multiple responses to you it's like ordering the food from food delivery app like swiggy or zomato you just open the app and click on your order it will give you the continue response it will feed the continuous live update about your order okay so you instead of asking repeatedly you just get updates automatically that's what the benefit of server streaming now let's move to the next one that is client streaming multiple request one response what happen the client keep sending multiple request and the server respond once at the end the server listen until all the data is received then send one final response for example imagine you are uploading multiple photos to the cloud drive okay so uploading photo 1 uploading photo 2 3 these are your multiple request and all photos uploaded successfully this is the response final response by server okay so what happened in client streaming you send multiple request but server will return once all the request are completed okay that is what called client streaming now the last one that is bidirectional streaming means both side communication or you can consider two way communication what happened both client and server send message continuously at the same time it's like it's like a real time conversation imagine you have a live chat with customer support for a refund issue so here you as a client you are talking to the server which is nothing the customer support or agent you ask him hey i need a refund then immediately he will respond you please share your order id then will give your order id then he will respond something and he will ask something like that there is a two way communication here what happening both client and server 
send message in real time without waiting for the previous message to complete it feels like a natural two way conversation instead of waiting for one side to finish before the other can talk that's superb right so don't worry i will cover each pattern with real time example in my upcoming videos okay now let's summarize the key difference of grpc and rest api what we just discussed okay so the left part is the different aspect and then rest and grpc their comparison so protocol rest use http1 however grpc use http2 data format rest use the json which is large and slow to parse however grpc use protobuf which is small and compressed okay so performance wise rest api is bit slow however grpc is faster okay since the data is compressed and compact it don't take much time to perform the serialize and deserialize and the key point you need to understand grpc data or protobuf data is in binary format okay which is not human readable but machine readable now streaming support rest don't have the streaming support grpc has the streaming support in rest it will create a connection for one request response cycle in grpc multiple request to one connection okay now best use for rest if you have designing the web app or simple apis but if you are dealing with the microservice real time application where you want to implement the live stream kind of concept or real time data update concept then you need to go for grpc fine since this is just an introduction lecture i hope you now have a clear understanding of what why and how grpc works if you have any doubts i would suggest you to watch this video again for more clarity okay so before we sign off i have a question for you we know grpc supports live streaming correct but rest doesn't natively support it however with reactive programming and web socket we can achieve live streaming in rest as well so here is the big question why should we still choose grpc over rest think about it and share your answer in the comments the answer is hidden right there in this video so in the next video we'll benchmark rest versus grpc to prove that grpc is faster with real performance comparison today was all about theory but next time we'll back it up with the real number until then stay tuned and i'll see you in the next video